Good morning. This is what the future is going to look like. Cities full of sensors to help us finding a parking spot to save uh, water in irrigation or to monitor pollution levels. Sensors to make them more efficient, more urban resilient and more livable. So these sensors will be generating tons of data, but can we imagine how much? So far, Twitter is already generating 80 gigabytes of data per day um, with your contribution today, um, which is a lot, right? But nothing com compared to a gas turbine engine like this one that generates 520 gigabytes of data per blade and day. And each of them has 20 of those blades. So can you imagine how much data will we generate when all those things are connected to the internet? And the most important question here, when is data becoming information? Here's an example. I have a friend who lives in a city which is one of the pioneer cities in releasing public data. He's also a runner, and one day he was wondering about the air quality in the city. So he went on the internet and found a lot of data about the, about the, the air quality. But it took him three days after reading scientific papers and European Union directives to find out that several parameters were outside the limits. So while it's true that we are accessing to more information than ever, we are not experts in every subject, right? So uh, at least all this information is very, very difficult to digest. So my point is, is this new over information, the new way of hiding information? Because data is absolutely nothing without a context, right? So, well, if data is nothing without a context, we shouldn't be afraid of all that data about us published on the internet. Who could find something useful on us on that vast ocean of data? Or should we? You remember this? The NSA using our day-to-day -day tech tools for spying on us? How many of you were angry when you learned about that? How many of you were scared? And how many of you stopped using your iPhone, closed your Facebook account, or stopped using your Gmail or Yahoo services? Nobody there here? Thank you. Congrats. Now it's you and this lady here. <laughs> so see, switch her iPhone to a BlackBerry, a device from a Canadian company, when she learned about that. So do you need to be the German chancellor or this guy here <laughs> to be really concerned about your privacy invasion? Is that the, the play? Because it looks to me that privacy is not a concern at all when you have something in exchange. Here's an example. That's an insurance company and a telco together to offer you a discount in your insurance company depending on the way you drive. To be eligible, you just need to, to share with them your speed, the way you drive, and other things like when and where are you going to at every moment. In exchange, you are getting a discount, so you are setting a price on your privacy, but at least you are totally aware of what are you disclosing at the moment of signing the contract, which I think it's not always the case. So, for example, here we have not a computer, it's a TV that we have in our living rooms in every house. Um, it, it tracks 100% of your use of, the, of it, includes a camera, a microphone, and 46 pages of privacy policy. So, if nobody's reading the manual, who is gonna read the privacy policy? Well, we, we should, because it says really scary things like 
don't say confidential things in front of your to be. You may be recorded. <laughs> so um, it's a, a really, really nice point. Um, my, my point here is that if we are finding ways to, to put a price on our, on our privacy, and we all agree that convenience trumps privacy. And we are already agree with that, right? And let's move to the other side right now. So there's certain information that doesn't need to be protected. Moreover, it needs to be public. So this is Fukushima on March 2011. So there was a tsunami, and a result, as a result of that, a nuclear accident that provoked a radiation leak. And there was a lot of media covering the, the human and material damages. And then we also found this kind of piece of news telling that someone detected radiation levels in California from Fukushima. And as a result of that, one of the companies selling pills for preventing you to absorb the, the radiation ran out of stock. These are the kind of things that make us wonder if we are really accessing to the real information or we are just accessing to the information that establishment want us to see. So, at Livellion, we just decided to do something about that, and we designed a personal Geiger counter for monitoring radiation levels, and we wanted to provide citizens with something affordable so that anyone could, could have something to monitor the radiation by themselves. We sent the first units to Japan, and after a couple of weeks, something amazing happened. People totally spontaneously were sharing the data on the internet with, all, uh, with the rest of the population, and they were keeping a real-time radiation monitoring map. That was an example of crowdsourcing, an example of citizen activism, and that was totally maintained by the, by the citizens. So, I think that now you are maybe wondering about data integrity. It's very nice to have people sharing data, but what happens if anyone can insert data into the network? How can we ensure the, the quality of that? Well, I think that we've all known a very good example of that for a long time, and it's Wikipedia. The more people contributing, the more people watching out for the quality of the information and the, the highest quality on, on that information. So now, can you imagine this city, this future city that we were starting in the beginning, um, where we have a government sharing public information about all the things interesting in the city, providing also a context to understand that, that uh, data and becoming that information, given that in an open data format so that anyone can access to that, modify, use it for their purposes, and, and, and interpret that, and accept also the contributions of the citizens to enrich the data set and to, um, to validate the overall results that we are seeing in, the, in that data set. Well, if all those things happen there, then the biggest legacy of the IoT and big data will be more democracy. I, I was supposed to be inspiring today, not, not tell you what to think. I just expect that at least I've made you think and I've move your opinions up or down. So my goal here was just you to realize that very, very complex questions don't have simple answers. Thank you very much. <laughs>